Why have you got a picture of, picture of Anthony Joshua up but not me yet? I ain't got a picture of you, you say. <laughs> That's when a liberty, you, that. That's a liberty. When you give me, when you give me a, a signed picture of you, I'll put that up. All right? All right. That's a deal, yeah. That's what, that's what I'm waiting for, the signed picture. But no, look, welcome to the Dutton Morgan podcast. It's, it's brilliant to have you on here. Um, so, yeah, George Hillyard, um, or George the Hitman Hillyard, yeah, is that right? Hitman, hit hard. Hit hard. Where did so, the nickname come from? I was on the 16th of June, 2005. I was six seconds off of breaking Mike Tyson's record for the quickie seven knockout in a pro debut. Wow. Uh, live on Sky Sports, I knocked out Jermaine Harvey in 42 seconds. So, wow. did, did you know uh, at the time, or was it after the fight you know that it... Well, I... I as I as I sat down on Sky Sports side interviewing me, that's when um, it was uh, Jesse Harding shouted it out. He was another, um, I think he was cruiserweight champion, and he shouted out, "You, he went, I'm sure you just broke Mike, Mike Tyson's record." And the crowd all went, well, "It was only like three thousand seater, but the crowd went absolutely mental." And I was like, as, "As that time, I was I was a 21 year old. I, I didn't really have a clue what was going on." I was just too excited and, and um, yeah, and it, it didn't all sink in until I got back in the changing room and I started crying. I was just like, what it just happened there? It was, um, yeah, so it was an exciting um, introduction into the into the pro ranks. I start. I, I looked at your, um, I didn't realise, I looked at your amateur record. That's pretty good, isn't it? But um, 35, uh, sorry, 45 and 35 wins, yeah. Yeah, I've got, yeah, that's right. But yeah, that's right. That's all, yeah, that's really that, isn't it? That's like a lot of the, a lot of the amateur careers is obviously the close fights, aren't they? So that's, that's a very good record to have that. Well, if, if, yeah. if I'm totally honest with you, the 10 fights I got lost, I lost. I only lost three. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Well, I've seen yeah. a lot of obviously amateur, but, and it's yeah. kind of, they sway, they just sway one way on the night, don't yeah. they? Obviously, um, so you can, but that's a great record. That I see. Yeah. You see, um, obviously, I'm I'm from the well, big, uh, big boxing. I'll never have box. guessed that. <laughs> hey, look, George, I'm ready for you any time you want to go. Any time you want to go, mate. I've oh, been saying he's, he's going to offer you out. I said, have we, no, no, not offering out a light spar. I was asking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but obviously, I, I obviously I um I grew up watching obviously all the Smith brothers, David Price. Even Anthony Fowler, no Anthony Fowler, obviously he um he went in the GB squad, but his record was like he had over hundred amateur fights and yeah, he, he, like you, you do so like losing in the amateurs is more learning, isn't it? So yeah. to be fair, it's like more kind of you know people don't really look at your amateur record. Obviously, your pro record is one thing, but amateurs, you know, it's it is actually win or learn really at that at that yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah, totally agree with you. So yeah. it's a it's a complete different game from the amateurs to the pro pro ranks mm -hmm. uh, I remember my as I said my first pro fight I was in the change room this is at Gorsbrook uh, Gorsbrook Leisure Centre in Dagnum in Essex yeah, uh, Essex London and um, I was putting the gloves on and they taped my hands up and I banged my hands together and it was like like concrete like two lumps of wood hitting each other huh. and I just looked up and I'm going to knock someone out of this. <laughs> right? That's the idea. My trainer, went, my trainer went, George, just, I don't want to burst your bubble, you know, but please remember, the other fella's got him on as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, and that's the first time it sunk in, I thought, shit, I, I don't want to get hit with these. Mm. And, um, yeah, and then I just went out there. And more on the fear factor, like, you know, when I don't want to get hit, so I was like, I want to end this as quick as possible. So, and it was my first fight. Is it was his twenty first? Yeah, and I, and I to blow him away in forty two seconds was a dream come true. I mean, no oh, matter. So, did yeah. you have a lot? Did you have a lot? Was was that one of the big factors for you, George? Was it like, were you thinking, I don't want to lose it in front of these people? Because obviously, I'm sure for your first fight, you know, you're selling untold tickets. And, yeah. And, um, uh, is that is that part of the fear factor, or is it actually look? For example, like uh, I was joking with the boxing gloves and stuff like that. I like to do some training, but what I'm saying is, 
I don't think I'd, I wouldn't want to go out there and get in the ring. Like, that nervous feeling, even if you're arguing someone in traffic, you know, you think, oh, here we go. But it's good. It's, it, yeah, it's good that you've just said that because, um, you know, a lot of fighters that you you sit like, I promise, I'm not getting nervous until I say, you're on next. And I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, yeah where's, the door? Yeah. Got, where's the door? I've got to go. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But, um, yeah, Danny Williams was like, when I moved to America, I see so much talent in the gyms. Like one fella, when I say he would have stood Floyd Mayweather on his head, right? But I went to him, I was like, I, just, I see his talent. I was like, I want to speak to him. Mm-hmm. So I walked up to him, I was like, oh, how many fights you had? And blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, I've had 11. And I'm like, obviously he's won 11. He's like, no, I've had 11, lost 11. I went, sorry? He went, yeah, I've, I've, I've lost 11. I was like, what? He went, look, truth is, he went, I'm a gym fighter. He went, in the gym, I can do it. He went, but you put me in front of a crowd. He went, I fold. He was t- mm. so honest about it, but there are so many American, Americans like that. In the gym, they're world class. Mm. So right? it's nerves. On the- right? You're talking about nerves. Yeah, yeah, the nerves. And they're like, that's why a lot of like, It'd be a shame that you can't work with a lot of these because things you could do with them. If I, if I, if I was a man, if, if I see this talent, I would have said, see you, I'm taking you somewhere to get your head sorted. Because he was super, super talented. Super. He was just, it was, oh, it was just beautiful to watch. I mean, it was like so slick, so, but when you watch him fight night, it was like, like a, like a, it was like that. It was scared. It was like I don't want to, don't want to let my hands go. It was, it was, it's a weird, it's weird. Is, is it different? The... So I was going to say, is it different in the US then, in, in terms of amateur? Because you had quite a lot of amateur fights, and I guess that was your, your bedding into boxing, well, wasn't it? This, is the, this is the thing. When you say I've had quite, I only had forty, I only had forty. Sorry, I have thirty nine amateur, one twenty nine, lost ten. So. That ain't a lot of. I didn't have a lot of amateur fights. Right. When well, you talk talk of a lot of other English, uh, like Anthony uh, Anthony Collar and, and all the others, they've had like a hundred and odd. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, I've only had. Remember, I had, I had a space where I went. I went off for three years because my obviously my mum had cancer at the time. I went, so I went. I couldn't do nothing. So it was a, uh, yeah, it was a, um, and obviously my dad went blind. It was just a cra- It was a crazy period that. I went through. That's the reason I I stopped for them three years. I I got left behind. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So. Is that before you turned pro or why you was? Pro? Oh yeah, that was that was when I was amateur. Yeah, that was like before I turned pro. That was between thirteen and sixteen. So I started at ten. At thirteen, I stopped. And at, at thirteen, from the age of ten to thirteen, I had a record of uh, twenty-one fights and seventeen wins. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I lost my first three fights. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, and I never lost them. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. I boxed on other, no one wanted to fight me. And I boxed on other, I boxed on the other show, away shows. And yeah, they yeah. went, we'll pay for all your expenses to come down. I was, I was like, it's only like 50 quid, but I was like, I'm <laughs> at 10 yeah. rich, you know. It's, it was, um, yeah, it's, it's, they're, they're, the stories, mate. The stories. Do you, do you do you remember do you remember them though? Like like it was yesterday, them first three, like yeah. You know, yeah where is how, how did that even like thinking back? I know it's obviously a while back, but did, did that then maybe was that a good thing for you? Your first losses where you've ended up having having to take them on the chin and crack yeah. off, or did it make you like not like it as much at first? Do you know the God's on the truth? This do you, do you remember Zama at a Grand Jill? Just say no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Just say no, yeah. Yeah. yeah so no, well, his dad... These are two young dad, dogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might be saying no now. <laughs> but but his, dad, yeah. his, his dad, Roy McDonald, was um, was uh, the, the head trainer at Lion Boys Amateur Boxing Club. And he's the one that found me, Dan, because I was obsessed with football. And... Um, I was down Dobbswick Caravan Park and he'd done something to me. I, 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 God's truth, I cannot tell you what I did. But he went, oh, you're boxing. I was like, didn't, I was like, what's that? He went, well, you don't box. 
He went, well, I want to see your dad. So he was walking over to my dad. And my dad went, sorry for my language, my dad went, for fuck's sake, what's he done wrong now? <laughs> and like thinking, because I was a bit of a tearaway. But my dad, uh, Roy went, nah. He went, he's just done something to me that only boxers do. And he went, he's told me he don't even know what boxing is. And this was on a Saturday in August 1994. And uh, on that Monday, um, I was in the gym. And mm. as I say, the, the rest is history. I've never looked, I've never, ever, never, ever looked back since. So it's, it's always been boxing since then. Um, not in a thuggish way. But yeah, it's always it's my passion. I, I watched. Um, it might have been an amateur fight. It was a IBA fight, Darren Lane. Some, yeah. Some. I, I I just had a little look earlier when I had a bit of time. Some fantastic yeah, that, body body shots in that. Yeah. Fight. Well, um, right. He was. Um, he was a Royal Marine. Right. Okay. Yeah. So um, uh, I I just lost my license on the British Boxing Board of Control, um, and, and um, so I went on the unlicensed scene. And everyone was, so I made this statement that I don't want to fight no one that I want someone to fight fight me, who's going to come and fight me. I, if I'm going to box on you, I want to box the best. Yeah. And um, I boxed this, um, you, you remember the Richardson family? Yes. Yeah, so I boxed one of the Richardsons. Okay. Is that the film that Alter Legends? Alter Legends, yeah, the Richardson family, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so his granddad walked up to me and went, you're going to lose tonight, ain't you? <laughs> and I went, I, I, it's got to be the truth. At the time, I'm, I, didn't have, I didn't have a clue who they were. I said, no, I ain't losing for no one. He went, yeah, you are. So, uh, <laughs> so um, anyway, the first round, I just walked out. He come back running at me. I ate him with a left hook, knocked him clean out. Thought I killed him. <laughs> yeah, I, I genuinely thought I, I, genuinely thought I killed him. He was... It was out cold. And um, when I say the place went dead quiet, and then obviously if it weren't for my granddad saying that let's, maybe we should go home now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, we had to go go home. But um, yeah, I had a little 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 um, spell on the, the unlicensed scene as well. So- Why did, and, um, why did they take the license away from you? Uh, I, had a, I had a change in my brain scan. Okay. But basically, what I did, I took because I wanted to lose the weight quick. This is no so any any kids listening to this coming through the ranks, this is not what you got to do. I took water pills, like what diabetics take, to um, oh, okay. to to, body, to get all the water out of my body, and um, I took them and I just basically pissed for England. So mm. on the scales. I got on the scales nice and slim, light, right, stone lighter. And, uh, but what it did was it changed, it, it makes your brain smaller. And, um, yeah, so the ball took my license away for it. They basically knew what I'd taken, but I never, I never got tested for it. And I never went for the test. So they took my license away. And, um, so I went, I went and done a little spell on the, as I said, on the unlicensed scene. And um, boxed uh, quite a few faces on there. Who, who, was, the biggest, who was the biggest on, one you'd say? Who was the biggest one you'd say? Where was he with the richest one of the Richardsons? Was he the one where looking back now, would you think, fucking hell, I got away with that one a little bit there? No, uh, yeah, yeah, no, but where did that give me a little G up if that kind of. Yeah, of course. Um, so um, I then boxed a fella because. Um, you know the Smith family, the Smiths down my, my end related to them. This a fellow called Gary Beveridge was a bit of a bit of a um, he was knocking everyone out, and he was a bit of so he ended up boxing my mate Victor Smith, and he he knocked my mate Victor out in like thirteen seconds, but like, and then he called me out, and I like he was at thirteen stone, I'm at eleven stone. And he, and he made this comment, he went, if in doubt, knock him out. And he went, I want to fight George Ulyard next, but doing all... So, um, I just thought, he's called me out on social media, so I thought, yeah, let's do it then. And, um, so we, <laughs> we boxed. 
And um, I've gone up to his weight, so I did train properly for it. I just put loads of weight on, just so I could make 13 stone. And and um, I got in the ring, and I hit him with this right uppercut, and all you see is his teeth just go, <laughs> fly, wow. flying out the ring. And um, uh, and he hit the canvas, but I'll, I'll, send you, I'll send you the videos of it. He hit the canvas and kissed the canvas. And I was like, what is this geezer doing? Like, what is... I was like, I didn't know this until I, but he went, I've never been knocked down before. He went, I've never hit the canvas. He went, so I thought I better kiss it. Say, look, welcome, welcome to the real world. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> so um, he got back up and he, he just come running at me. So, and I beat him on points this time. And then I beat, yeah, so the final bell, where I beat him on points. But, and it was a close fight. But then he, he offered me out again on social media. And I was like, why does this geezer keep calling me out? But then he, he was where we live in our local area. Everyone knew him as a bit of, you don't mess with him and all that. So where he kept calling me out and calling me out, I was like, do you know what? I'm making myself look a bit of a coward here. I've just got, to, I went coming in. This is, so this time I trained properly for it. And I got in there and <laughs> knocked another four teeth out and, not, and knocked him out this time. Uh, wow. he was out. Yeah, he was, he was, he was gone. But I trained for it this time. So that is the biggest rivalry that we we had. But talking about the, the Lang fight was because he was a Royal Marine and he was you, you see how big he was, right? Uh, yeah. if you if you watch he was an absolute lump. And um, what weight was I, that? I sorry? What weight was that? Well he was fifteen nearly sixteen stone. Wow. And um I went, I'll just fight him. I, I, I took it. It was unlicensed. I, was, I went, it's, uh, so I come in at fir 13. Oh, yeah, and uh, yeah, 13 4, I come in at. And um, we touched gloves. You know, when it was like that rocky moment. You know, when you go to the middle of the ring and you touch gloves. So I, I whacked his hands. Yeah, I whacked his hands and I probably did whack them and they never budged. Huh. <laughs> so I oh, went, well, like, bang like Rocky Free, Drago, or, or yeah, yeah, Rocky yeah, that's, for yeah. them then. Yeah. Rocky Four, that was it. Yeah. So as I hit his hands, I looked I looked down at the promoter and he was smiling at me. And I was like, I've been set up here. That's in my head though. I've been like, I've, I've been I've been set up here. I'm not I'm, I'm being set up. So I went back to my corner, I went, I went, I've got an handful here. And it was like, just keep it long, just keep it long, just keep it long. And we come out for the first round and he he hit me with this jab and I thought <laughs> Fuck you know, I was like, yeah, you know, like, you know, when you're like, your old bum starts squeaking, you think, yeah, you shit. I mean, so I was like, well, I'm in it now. This, we've got to go. We, we, we're going to have it. So, uh, yeah, we started having it, and I got him against the ropes and threw a left hook to the body, and he hit the floor like a sack of potatoes. Yeah. And then um, he never got up. And I, I was literally going to say, thank you. <laughs> George, that was George, that was a Few powerful body shots, though, weren't it? I've watched that earlier, yeah. actually. It, yeah. was no, few, do, absolutely. Yeah. it was a George, rocky moment, lifting him off the canvas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, I, what I was going to ask is, George, when does that moment come in where you think, like, like you're saying is, obviously you study your opponents and stuff like that, obviously as, it's more obviously as you go into the pro game. But when is it when you think, but see, I've just noticed straight away, is because I'll be thinking like that, I'd wait, I have need someone to provoke me to think, right, here we go. Like, not in a fight, yeah. even... Uh, where does that more a different great question, yeah. great question yeah. you know like where does, where's that moment are you waiting to think right hit me in the face will that wake you know or is it something before you do you have to tell yourself something mm. like we're rock like like we're saying referring to the rocky when he goes down and like in the corner before that that to me looks like that's his moment to be like right let's go what's your moment yeah. where you think right switch your mind or not well I my, it's normally my ring entrance because I'm, I'm I'm never nervous in the changing room until they say right ill yard you're on next and I think shit that's when like I have that nervous moment just for the ring entrance mm. you may not you may look at it and think you flash prick because I'm I'm nodding my head dancing but I'm in my own world that's cool. how I control that's how I control my nerves mm. and um, but when you get in the ring it was having that first that first jab thrown at me and it hit me so. But this is this is you find that characters of people. Some people 
will just fold. I think, yeah. right? And I like to think that I've got a set of bolts between my legs, and but like, when the going gets tough, I'm ready to I'm ready to to go. But if I get beat, I get beat. But I won't what's get beat because I quit. What's that like for you in the ring? Because when <laughs> You know, we're talking. I've watched. I, I, Sonny won't mind me saying Sonny's fought in karate in the world's and the British Championships before, and I've always watched him. And he comes alive when he's hit. Before that, he doesn't come alive. Does, does yeah, that? I think, bring... I think it's just more of like wait, it wakes you up and you're like, right, I better get in gear now. Like George yeah. already mentioned, I think it's a bit yeah. of that. But yeah. also, I, I think with me when I used to step out, I used to get like a lot of nervousness build up, but. I learned to turn that nervousness into like positive energy as well, that's it. which totally. is important. Yeah, yeah Mars. That's as I said. What I was talking about, America. Some people can't control their nerves, and it's mad. But as I said, Danny Williams was another one of them. Like, if you see him in the changing rooms, what they were doing with him to control his nerves, right? Because he's super, super talented, but he's just his nerves got the better of him. I remember Jim McDonald was in the changing room and Jim McDonald got down on one knee and done this speech. And um, I wish I could I could say this speech for how it, how it come out, but Jim McDonald done this, spoke to him so calmly, but it was like, it was weird. You know, it was like someone rose from the dead. Oh. And it, it was just like th seeing someone near enough crying to being, we're going to war now, let's go. It's like, what? It's like a form of bipolar. It's like watching him cry into being, being the happiest man in the world. It was just weird. But, and all he'd done is sat down on one knee, one knee, sorry, and just spoke to him and said, right, this is, this is what we've got to do now. Yeah, you're here. You've come here. You've got this far for your family. And he, he'd done this speech about his kids. I'm not joking. This speech went on for about three or four minutes. And all suddenly he just got up and walked out and, and then went and won the British title against Mark Potter. I don't know if you remember when his shoulder come out. Yeah, yeah, no, I've seen that. His I've shoulder seen. come out and he hit him with that yeah. left. Yeah, I've that was good. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Remember that. Uh, yeah. Did, he, did, he go, did he go on to win a world title, Danny Williams? No, he, he won the British British European Commonwealth, uh, got to the World Stage uh, title against Klitschko, and got That's stopped right. in the six, four for six round. Yeah, no, yeah. I weren't sure whether he did go on and, and get it, but yeah, no, I yeah, used to yeah. it. I followed it a lot, but that see, see this, and obviously, 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 I know you know people, but thanks for coming on. It's actually unbelievable to, to see someone else's mentality. Like our last, our last week, we had um, a footballer, and it's 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 so different, but not that different mentality kind of. Sure. You yeah. know, it's it's their actual winning mentality and. What I love the most is about the boxing when people say, um, you know, you don't know how brave you are until you'd have to get up off the canvas. Yes, you know, yes, and you, you know, you can yes. can't train for get off the canvas, you know, that right, is so usually I, just I, that's I, up I, within I, you, mate. Yeah, no, you well said there, mate. You well said. The the first the first time I ate the canvas was live on Sky Sports in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And then um, I've told this in other interviews as well. I kind of froze. Because all I had there was my dad, my granddad, and two two fellas that, that were sponsoring me. And um, so, and I'm very confident. I said, so I'm standing there, camera's on me, my music's playing. And as I'm playing, all I've got is four people there. And he sold out this Alexandra Hall on the old Ford Road in Ireland. So one side was Catholic, one side was, it was, it was a weird combination to be in. And um, so everyone was booing me. And I was like, yeah, this is how I just <laughs> But someone threw a chewing gum, right? And it dunked me on my nose, oh. right? And it just zapped all my energy. It took everything out of me. So I've gone from being all this bopping and being confident about things to being, oh, shit. And I, I, I froze. I did. I, 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 froze. I ain't gonna lie, I froze. And then I got in the ring. And I just, all I did was walk through, walk through my hands like this. And he was punching me and he's winning the fight. It was just, it wasn't hurting me, but I weren't throwing nothing back. And I went back to the corner after the third round. And my, my trainer then, Roy Callahan, said to me, do you know what? He went, I genuinely thought I had a world champion on my hands. 
He went, I thought you were special. He went, I don't know what's happened. Yeah, he went, you bowled it. He went, you've, you've, he went, you've lost it. He went, what's so wrong with you? He went, I thought you were, I went, I have got it. And that, that kicked up a little, like, I went, all right, and I'll show you what I've got now. So I went out there and I started opening up on him. And then everyone was like, oh, like Jim, what was always commentating at the time was like, oh, who yeah, seems to have woke, uh, seemed to have woken up. And um, as quick as I, so now I'm pre- putting all the pressure on him. I threw a left hook, but my hand was here. So I threw it like this, my chin, he hit me straight on the chin, bang with a left hook. I've done a complete 360 and hit the canvas head first. All right? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> love the way I love the way I love the way like you think about it now. That's what I love. Yeah, 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 but I hit face first, bam, it spun completely round, hit face first. I stood up, and now it's just now the last round. I've lost every round. And um you're saying like 27 seconds left. And the referee's going one, two, three. I'm not just I see 20 thumbs, 20 fingers, 20 referees. He went, do you want to carry on? I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm just, I'm dribbling. You know what I mean? So he went, carry on boxing. And Kieran Healy run at me. And I threw this right hand, right? And not even joking, it would have knocked on all sat. It hit him so clean, <laughs> he was out cold. He was right out cold down on the floor. I genuinely thought I killed him. You know what I mean? And that arena... Like it was only a 4,000 seater, but it was, you could have heard a pin drop. It went that quiet. And all you could hear was my dad and my granddad screaming at the top of their voices. But that was the first time ever hitting the canvas. Never, it's never happened to me before. But I learned that night that I've got something there. I, I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not a quitter. I've that, got that something grow, there. That grows massive. That surely must have then grown massive confidence then into your yeah. thinking. Did you feel like kind of, at one stage, then going through indestructible. When that kind of stuff's happening, do you think I can walk? I can walk through anyone, or was you always still a little bit wary? Well, it just proved because everyone used to say to me one thing about George: he can punch and he can take a punch, mm-hmm. but he don't care how good your chin is. If you get hit on the button, right, you're going to go over, mm-hmm. right. If you get hit properly and you like, you get because sometimes you get hit with a hit with a shot, and to the crowd, he went. Oh my God, look at that shot he's just taken. And it hasn't, it weren't a big shot. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, but this shot, it, it rocked me to my, it rocked me to my boots. And some way, thank God, I found a, as I say, a haymaker. It, it, it come from the gods. It, it, it literally, um, I was blessed that night for sure. Do you know uh, what we, we um, Adam mentioned it, we had a football run, we had Roy Carroll on last week. and so passionate about football and listen you you speak so passionate about boxing really passionate if if i'm anything i do i'm i'm passionate about like as people know i was i was a footballer first of all and um it when i i ended up signing i played for barry barry earns at Leighton orient and um next minute i'm signing a contract a 15 million pound contract to be a boxer do you know what I mean? It was, it was, and everyone was calling me the next Roy Keane because I weren't, I was a solid player. I was always, I've always been, been, I love physical, anything to be with, you know, if we're going to barge each other, let's not tickle each other, let's fucking barge each other. Let's, you know, if we're going to go in for a challenge, just go in for a challenge. You know, let's, let's do it. If, you know, if we're going to break legs, one of us is going to break a leg. Yes, that was my mentality. I mean, that's how much I wanted to win. My, um, I always, like when people go, oh, we get back to the changing room and they go, we've just won. And they go, it was a great team performance. And I'm like, fuck off. I've just won. I just scored the winning goal. You know what I mean? But I was that passionate about things. I was like, I weren't selfish, but it was, I, 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 you know what I mean? I was, just, I was just so passionate about it. Like, yeah, Competitive just, as well. Always <laughs> wanting to win, right? That's what it's like. Always, yeah, you, always. Yeah. Even to now. And I try to drill that in my, like, I get a lot of criticism criticism for this so I drew this into my sons I'm like you don't get you don't get rewards for coming second and they're like oh there's nothing wrong with coming second. and when when the boys have lost at football 
I'm like, well, where did you play? How did you think you played? You know what I mean, I went, do you think you could have done more? And they're like, yeah, I, I could have done more. Well, then, then you play shit then. Like, that's, that is my, it's the win, 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 winning mentality. Yeah, you do, do know like, what I, my kids know, I say to them, sports day, if you lose, don't come home, which which is quite harsh for my six-year-old, but fortunately, she won't. <laughs> but no, I do, but I'll I, say I to was, them, it's a joke. Was, no, I've been saying that for years. I would, yeah, I would, I would say, but I would do the same. Mm, yeah. I mean, even if he was two, he'd be sleeping out in the garden for the night. <laughs> George, you see, see the way you said that though were there about him. Um, he was like, "Well, I scored the winning goal. Look, fuck, fuck the team, kind of. I scored yeah, the winning yeah. goal. But is it was it better than when you switched over then, where it's a f- solely focused on you and the boxing game? Obviously, look, a lot of a lot of boxers they will say openly they loved footy first, you know. Um, I don't know if you like. I am, um, you know, Joe Selkirk. He was, he was yeah. probably, he was. Yeah. He's a good friend of mine. He was big on that, but he's still not. He doesn't box no more, but he'll still play five aside. He obviously lives out in Spain. Yeah, yeah. He still wants to play seven aside. So, would you, would you, one you, once you do hang them up eventually, is footy still your first love? Uh, or, he, or, or was, was, was that, question. was that a side Bo- thing? Bo- boxing, the real thing? Boxing, boxing is my first love. Don't sit on the fence either, Georgie. And I'll come on, we want our long rock. He was going, he was thinking of but an answer football, there. Come on. But what, once we're allowed back out, I'll be playing it once a week. There you go. That, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So, yeah. and I will be in the gym punching. But do you, do you, feel, yeah. you feel that, do you feel like, even though, look, you're going there for fun, make like, five aside in pre season is actually the best fitness for you. But yeah. I've seen, we played in a charity game. And it was it had been Liam Smith just before he was fighting Canelo, Joe Selkirk, obviously the kind of boxing trainers mate, they're all like that. <sighs> but then when I go to the gym, mate, after one round, I'm like that, and I consider myself quite fit, and I'm sure Sonny and Peter would be the same way, kind of a football background. But it's a different type of fitness. Do you enjoy kind of both of them? Well, well when I was I was playing football and boxing at the same time, mm-hmm. so. Um, I was at Leighton Orient, West Ham, South End, and Torquay. And um, I got transferred back from Leighton Orient. Like, I, I, not transferred, but I, I quit uh, Torquay because it was just too far to travel. And I went back back to um, South End United. And then that was my dad was travelling me up there at the time. So it was like, I'm going to go back to see if I can get back down to Leighton Orient. And um, I was always like, it's just that competitive side. Mm-hmm. So, but then uh, it got to the stage that I had to choose between boxing, what do I want to do? And then Barry Owens was like, do you want to play football for us? Or do you want to box? And um, I went, oh, I want to box. And this is a grudge show if he went, you foolish boy. <laughs> right? And then on the, as I said, on the 16th of June, 2005, he's never seen me box. Right? Even though, he had seen me box, but he never knew it because mm. I was playing football for him as a as a fourteen year old for Leighton Orient, training at Draper's Field, and then I finished I finished my training session, go to the gym and train, and he'd be that night I'd be fighting, and he'd turn up watching us, but didn't know I played for him, wow. and um, so he'd be at the show at your call. We give him a table and if him Charlie Magri and um who's the Liverpool fellow, John um oh Con- uh, Conte. John Conte, John Conte, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. they had the ta- they had the table and I was giving the trophies out. And um I just I just uh, so I've just finished training with him and everyone was like, and now I've gone and box and, and obviously got boxer of the night. And um yeah, it was just it was a mad surreal moment. But all the time he never knew I was I was playing football for him. George, I'm, I know why Adam asked that question, because I know he's gonna get Roy back and create a five aside team with us and Roy Carroll. So, well, some team, I, isn't it? I, 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 I'm I'm thinking about going and you, my job now is coming on good. You know, you know what I do, right? <laughs> I say I've got to ask you this, right? I, when I go in there now, I just do it for fitness, yeah. But I kind of Peter will tell you more, more about, about what I'm saying is, but I wanted to go in there to prove I can take the shot. I yeah. wanted to be in the face at first. So I kind of challenged the big, like I went in as a joke. So 
I was saying at the gym, and Conor Ben goes in there. So I was saying to the lads, messing, I want to see Conor Ben. I'm going to say to him, let's go. Like, just as a joke, like, yeah. move me round a minute. Yeah. And then, obviously, he wouldn't, he wouldn't even hit me or anything like that. But what I'm saying is, I, I, I felt like, whereas I've had, had setbacks like everyone else has in the life, I just find that someone's, I, I don't know why, I wanted to see someone give me one yeah. and to see if I could take it. And that was my mentality of, like you're saying, winners. And I just have, wanted to have you heard of the, um, Have you heard of the white collar events? Yeah, yeah, the white collar, yeah. So I used to train a lot of the city boys and I used to get these men come in, really wealthy men, but they're like 71, 72 years of age and they're like, look, I need to box. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, they're yeah, like, yeah. I just need to give it off my chest. I need to, I want to have one fight to say I've done it. Yeah. Right. So don't get wrong, they're boxing in big 16-ounce gloves and head guard on and all that. And it's all money raised for charity, but it's fucking hard. Mm-hmm. Right, sorry to keep swearing, but it's hard. Yeah. And um, I think there's, it, I think there's a real men, male mentality to. Uh, I, I did Wing Chun, which is I call it Chinese boxing. Did Wing Chun for many years, and there's that real men, male mentality to know what it's like to be hit in a safe environment. If you see what I mean. That, that sounds like it's all felt. It's mad. Yeah. Just the challenge right, so, itself. Well, do, do you know why. where I was getting at? Do you know where I was getting at? Well, on that, con- so the man, this old man, walked into the into the gym. It's called the Real Fight Club in Liverpool Street. Yeah, I heard. Um, it, yeah, yeah. And um, Alan Lacey used to own it. And this old man walked in, and he said, "I was in the office today. He went, I've had a confrontation with one of my workers. Right? This man's in the st- like city boy, city boys. I mean, brokers. He went, and one of the youngsters is is giving it and swearing at me, and he went." For a, for a moment, he went, I didn't know if I could take a punch. Yeah. So if it, if it went off there, he went, I didn't know what I, he went, I don't know if I could, what I'd know what to do. So I took him on the pads first to try and like, I mean, and he, you could see like, it's weird, forget age. At 71 years of age, it was like a kid in a candy shop. Straight away, he was like, I don't know what he did the next day when he went to work, but <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was, yeah, it was like he was, he went away smiling, like from ear to ear. It was, like, it was and it was, it's lovely, like boxing, like contact sport is the best. It should be in schools now. And maybe the world won't be in, sorry, like, the world won't be in the situation that we are in now. Do you know what I mean? You should you should be bringing boxing back to schools. Yeah, it was that in schools be. years ago, wasn't it? It was in schools many years yeah. ago. Yeah, As part of, I don't know if it's part of curriculum or part of PE or whatever, but... Uh, but you, do you imagine if... if sorry, like last one I said. But you imagine if um, two kids were having an argument in school, you go, all right, then get your gloves on, you go to the boxing ring. Not wait till you after school, I'm going to stab you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Sort your difference out. Whoever wins in there, shake hands after and then get on with your day. What a better, what a better way then to do that? 100%. That's, 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 that's so true. I was, was going to say, you won the WBU Super Middleweight title. Was that your best moment in boxing, would you say? No. Uh, you, 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 I, won, I won the WBC Confederation at Super oh, Middleweight. I won WBC. the WBU at Middle. Right. So uh, get get it right, Pete. You're calling me a fat bastard, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was going to ask that though. What? Because you fought at different weights. What? What is your? Yeah. What is your best yeah. weight? My best weight is is that like middleweight? Is that eleven like stone? Yeah. Right, so okay. I won the British Masters at that, and I won right. the WBU at middle, and then the, I won the WBC Confederation, which it, it sounds good, but it's, it's it's a it's not a it's a minor title, but I won that against Manzo Smith. Um, what is your best fight? You know you have that moment, you know, I've had it in football where everything goes right and you so, feel amazing. And right, what, what? so the the best fight for me was against Manzo Smith. It was because oh. it was because of the build up to it. Everything that went on during that training camp was um they they ended up coming training at our gym. Right. Uh, and I, yeah, it was like, and then I weren't allowed in the gym to train. It was it was a, it was all mind games. It was all trying to they tried to play with the mind games, really. So I, I couldn't train properly. 
and my trainer was looking after the gym for them to train. So oh, he couldn't right. train me because he was looking after the gym. It was a weird, so I ended up training myself. And the only training I did was like just runs. And now I've got to do a 12 rounder. And if you see the fight, it, it got voted non-television. It got voted like one of the, the best fights in the last decade. We just, I, I won it quite comfortably in the end. But he, um, yeah, we both walked out looking like we'd been hit by buses. Yeah. Um, it was a great, great battle. I mean, would, would you really rather have... that? Would you rather that? Like, so, like what I'm saying is, I'd rather, I'd rather go to two top, top players and give everything you've got and nick a point, or would you go in there rather than just dying someone else? Or would uh, you think, like, look, no. I'll be in myself. Do, do you know what you said? You know, you said that you want to, you, you did the boxing because you want to see if you could take a punch and you could, yeah. I mean, Everyone knows what I can do, right? Mm. But I've never ever, and I even question myself sometimes. You know, you know when the going gets tough, have I got that? Am I, are my balls big enough to go? Now nah, let's go. Yeah. I mean, and in that fight, it proved that I did have them. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean, it was like it was a dig deep, and like I was absolutely knackered. And I was mm. a cream cracker, and but I was still pulling it, putting the. The punches off to to nick the round or you know it was like digging deep you know what i mean it's, i'm not even joking mate it's, it makes me want to cry now but it, you know that satisfaction of of winning something where everyone's against you again you can't win this you can't win this and because you haven't and you've had someone who went against you and when you win it and you turn around and you're like yes suck <laughs> yours you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean it's like but everyone and then no one wanted to give me no, no, um, but I had all judges all going in my favour. And everyone was like, no, Manzo Smith won that fight. You know what I mean? And then all the boxing people, proper boxing people were like, no, you, you, <laughs> you pissed it. You won it very comfortably. You, you've done it very smart. You know what I mean? And it was because Manzo Smith was throwing loads of punches, but someone went, if it's about throwing punches, as soon as the bell goes, you don't have to do that. You're 10 mil up. It's not about, it's about hitting and not getting hit. So, um, yeah, defending, yeah, defending well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just, um, but it was a, uh, yeah, what I had to go through, mate. That, that was, yeah, that was my best, best win to. Well, that's a different mentality in, in America, isn't it? About boxing, boxing's more, Another it's question. more technical. It's more about technique, it's not just about swinging punches, it's about how well yeah. you defend and, and it's. But, I, I the reason I preferred America, and this is no disrespect to England, yeah. it's just, but you know when I got beat here, everyone was like, like in in the, U, the UK we build you up to knock you down, yeah. So sure. we put you on the we we want to build you up to build this bed, and then we want to knock you off it. Now it's it's just the English mentality, but uh, and don't worry, we've got the best supporters ever, loyal's. But it is true, they want to knock you down as soon as they get you up there. To to like they love a they love that um, that cliche of the comeback, you know. So but in America, it is completely different. It was I, I'm I remember like when I messed up in the UK, everyone was like, ah oh, George, you should retire, you're old now, you're getting old, you should just but in America, I was like, yo, dude. Oh, I ain't going to speak American. But I was like, listen, don't give up. Cowards give up. And I just stood there and they were so behind me and supporting me. It was like, listen, if you were injured and you were talking funny or you wasn't good enough, then we'll say, do you know what? Call it a day. But you're not hurting no one. Right? All you're doing is chasing a dream, uh, chasing a dream. And then I was like, George, Do you know what? You're right. I, I know you. I know you retired, and then you come back. And I know the reason why you come back. A conversation with your son. I, I, yeah. I know Adam's yeah. son is probably not heard this. Did, did you explain that? So I think I think that's that's really important. So, but... Yeah. So after I had a, I had a minor stroke, um, and um, but I didn't feel like I had a minor stroke. So I'm, I don't, and as I said, I don't look like I've had a stroke, but you know, I went and had loads of tests done and it, they said, look, yeah, you've had a minor, it's a minor stroke through stress, but 
um, it's not going to stop me from boxing. Um, so, um, but I thought, you know, what, I've got family, and I've I've kind of knocked it on the head now. I've been out been out for like eight months. And I was I was giving it the dad speech to my son, uh, my eldest boy Teddy, and um, I was just like, listen, you don't ever ever give up in life. And his first words to me, the cheeky little shit, went to me. So then, why did you give up? I was like. <laughs> I mean, I ain't, I ain't give up. Went, yeah, you have. I'm not even joking. Even though he's, I wanted to get hold of him, and I, wanted, I just wanted to punch him in the face. It, uh, not in that, uh, because the reason being is because he was right. Touch the nerve. Yeah, he, he like, and I was like, what do you mean? He went, well, you reckon you haven't had a stroke? You reckon, you, you reckon you're you fit? And I was like, do you know what? I went, right. I went and had another medical done. Literally the following week, I said to my partner Michelle, I was like, babe, I went, I've just got to pull some money out of them our bank here. And I've got to go and get the, I've got to go and have this so two and a half grand for my medicals. I said, I've got to go and do it. And then I passed all my medicals and and then the British Boxing Board of Control went, we're not going to give you your license back though. So I had to go, even though I paid all this money, I had to go for another body, uh, a governing body called BIBA, British and Ireland Boxing Association, to box again. And um, it was just a crazy, it was mad, just a crazy, like, obstacle. But that was my, my son. Yeah, he'd give me that, uh, yeah, well, why are you giving up? And I was like, what? Yeah, it was, I was, I was, it's weird, because you don't ever want to hurt your kids, but at that moment, it's like, you're like, you little shit. Mm. Like, and yeah, so you always told it to me, but... You were, <laughs> you, were stop, you were stopping for him, but then, yeah. like... He gave you the fire back in your bed. Like, had you lost yeah. the fire or, or was it burning inside you? And he just gave you a, a kick up the arse. Another, another great question, mate. Um, it wasn't that I lost the fire in my belly. The, the fire's always been there, but it just wasn't lit up. Yeah. yeah. It, was just, it was just on. And, um, but he lit it. He turned, he, turned it, he turned it full round. Because what it is in, in the boxing, which mainly in the UK, it's so much politics in, in the boxing. I mean, as you said, you know, the, uh, the, the Smith brothers and Anthony as well. There's yeah. so much politics in, in boxing and people don't realise what you've got to do. And half of the time, a lot of us boxers, we do look like talkers. Because uh, you put things on social media because you're, t you're told to do it because you've got to sell tickets, you've got to sell yourself. And when it don't come off, it just makes you look like a talker. So people are like, oh yeah, Georgie's talking again, or the Smith brothers are talking again. You know, it, it makes it does. It makes you look. Tony Bell, you know, Bell used the best, started, didn't he? Yeah, but Tony do you know what? I, I love Tony Bell, though. Yeah, the, yeah. The reason good. I, the reason I loved him for it was because even though he was doing it, he was like, do you know what? I've had a knockback. He went, but I'm still going to keep going, still keep talking it. And he was like, if you got a problem, come fucking see me. Yeah, yeah. We I mean, want to. And that's my and that's my mentality now. That is my mentality. If you, if you, if you, come see me. Come on. Don't 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 call me over social media. Don't put things on on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram, and that. Come see me. You know what I mean, everyone shuts up then. You know, what I mean? it's, it's, it's I the like best the, way to um, be. I like the face-offs they do. Tony Billy's done a few of them, hasn't he? You know, the face-offs yeah. on YouTube and they do, and they're good to watch because yeah. it's it's just like you said, it's a lot of talking, but it's entertaining, isn't it? Which is it's all yeah. which is no, about. But, Believe me, a lot of a lot of people think with the talking is it's part of it, part of it. But when you get to that square off position, like no one will beat me if I'm once I'm you won't beat me at a square at. I ain't looking away at you. Because in my head, I'm like, if I look away, I've lost. So I can't like as a I can't look away. Like, yeah. I can't I can't look away. I'm like I mean. I have things. I have things like like that. What I'm saying is, do you have a thing where it's like, so if I go out, if this is Peter, you'll laugh this one. But if I go out in the morning, say I spray the and I don't put it back, like facing the right way, I think I'm gonna have a shit day. Yeah. yeah. Do you, would you think there? So is it is your mentality the right. same? Where you that's, if that's I don't look, if, yes, I, if I look yes. away, I've lost, <laughs> I've lost already. Yeah, that's the OCD in your mate. That, and that's man. that's and I'm like that. So when we we pack things away. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's mad. Isn't it? I, I pack things in straight lines, and yeah, yeah. so everything is. I mean, and like, yeah, it's, <laughs> that's my. I, I actually think like that's what I'm saying is, and that that's why I'm interested to get in your head about it, George. Like, like 
even though, and it's happened before, where I've thought, oh, shit. And I've come back up to the house and just moved it. And then it's been a fine day. Look, it is probably is, but I, I just believe that the sportsman's mentality, and, you know, where you said, has that ever come into your head? Where You might have looked away for a second, you know, something's caught your eye. Do you think, is, does that untold doubt come in? Or is it like, oh, shit. You see this thing here? It's the most powerfulest tool in the world. And I've learned that more so in talking with Pete. Like, uh, I'm not kissing his ass because he's here. But what he's helped me do over, the, say, the last, say, six weeks, mate, it's been fucking, like, and I've never had a sports coach, like, someone talk to me. I and mean, sometimes we sit there and he calls me, and we just talk about shit. But it feels like it's, all the books have gone off my shoulder. I can go and get them with my day now. I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's like, he's, he's worked quite wonders for me. Like, and he may not feel like it, but he has. And that's, like, that, that's the, the beautiful, yeah, the beautiful part of this, should we say, this sport or, or the sport, sport industry? Any sport, yeah. It's um because forget that boxing, rugby, like all sports, all af- athletic people have all got that that thing about them. Yeah, where, no, I agree. Like that's what gives them their their single-mindedness, their drive, their focus, yeah. everything has to be right, everything has to be perfect. I understand yeah. it can be a hindrance at times, but also it can it can help with focus. It, it's, it's balance, isn't it? It's, yeah. As yeah. you know, totally. it's getting balance right. George, I know you trained with um, Mayweather Camp in Vegas. I know you're, you're looking to, you know, this is part of your comeback. You're looking to come back again and looking to get out of Vegas. What was that like just being around that? Being around the Mayweather camp, he, he's got to be one of your favourite boxers, hasn't he, Floyd Mayweather? Yeah, he's a real winner, isn't he? Yeah, it's just it, it just it just cuts off um, like as I said, like you know records, yeah. records are for DJs in America. No one cares about a record in the UK. Everyone's like, oh, he's he's thirty and oh, but then you look at his record and you see who he's boxed. No disrespect, my name could have beat him in a fucking wheelchair. Like right? they're terrible. But um, in America, they're, they're like, listen, don't worry about records. Just keep climbing the ladder. That's what I, that's what I said. They're, they're so positive about things. Like, and if that, you know, when you get beat sometimes, they're like, it's, it's like, that's God's way of saying, you're not ready yet. It's not your time. Do you know what I mean? It's like, but it's going to come. So who, keep, is your, who is your favourite boxer then? My, my favourite boxer is... Marcus Antonio Barrera right. and James and James Tony. Oh, okay. One's a Mexican and one's American. Yeah, yeah. So, so Tony, Tony, another middleweight, right? Same, same weight as you. But he, he fought Holyfield, yeah. didn't he? What was that? What weight was that he fought? Yeah, if, he stopped Holyfield, didn't he? That was um, was it cruiserweight? No, heavyweight. Heavyweight. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought uh, it was a middleweight, or did he? He was. You know, oh, okay. he went. He went from light middle. He went from light middle to middle, middle to super middle. Then he went from super middle to light heavy. Then he went wow. cruiserweight. Wow. <laughs> then he went. Wow. Like, yeah, no. Then he boxed. Um, he got in there super seat, but he's so talented. And obviously, when you see the way I fight, I kind of. That's how I like. I kind of. I mean. It's replicate. I copy it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. I was trying to think of the word, but it won't come up. You, you, <laughs> you must have like combinations that you like to use when you was boxing them. Is there one that you'd always, you know, it's like in football, if you want to like, you know, if step over is going to work, you're going to do it. That's yeah, just your, yeah, like, yeah. did you have any combinations or yeah. punches well, you we, like to do? So I, I watch a lot of fighters and obviously you watch a fight and you, you know what punch he does a lot. So I'll, I'll say, oh, Marcus Antonio Barrera, I say he shot, but his shot would be jab, hook, then right hands. And then, or I'll say uh, Mike Tyson would be obviously a right hand to the body, then a right uppercut. So I, I used to drum them names in my head. So if I said Mike Tyson, I knew, I knew what punch it was. If I said uh, well, uh, like Marcus that. Antonio Barrera, I knew what punch it was. By the time yeah, you so, said that, though, yeah, something else would happen. Marcus Antonio Barrera, that's quite a mouthful to say. You've got to abbreviate that, 
like it's like Coach Carter, isn't it? Where he where he where he he, he tells it like I have a sister. Her name is Delilah, and I didn't yeah. know what. To, so what I'm saying is that's like <laughs> where you're saying boom, boom, and like I love that. That's I love it. I love yeah. it. Not that's yours. That's great great. That's, yeah. Great. yeah. That's really good right. triggers, isn't it, for, for, for techniques and that. Yeah. What, what's, what's been your toughest moment? Yeah. What's been your toughest moment in boxing, George? Your t- like actual boxing in your boxing um, career? It's just no one's fault but my own. I've messed right. about so fit talented. And like, I know I'm super talented. And um, I should have gone on to be become, and obviously everyone knows what I signed and they think. But my, my, my trouble's been that of um because i with trust i'm very you, you know me mate like what you know about me already is it's mm-hmm. all about loyalty as yeah. soon as someone messes up that loyalty with me because and i say this, i'm the most loyalist person you're ever going to meet but as yeah. soon as that mess up that loyalty with me it fucking messes my head up but like, i become this like like oh, oh i don't care then Duh, fuck it don't worry about it like I become instead of concentrating on the goal, and that's where and that's where you've come and kept me on the goal. If that makes sense, because sure. you you've seen some bits where I'll, I'll be rattling off to you and you'd be like, "I'm ready to go off on fucking one," but you control me and say, "Listen, we look, just calm down. Just why don't we go this route?" And it, it helps me out, Joe. Because if I didn't have you, I would have I would be doing them. I won't put it this way. I won't be on this podcast right now. I'll probably out rolling the street somewhere. And I've got kids indoors and you know the missus indoors on and I have you know, silly me fucking rattling off me my brain, I go, oh, fuck this, I'm going, I'm going for a walk. You know what I mean? This but that's my dance my dance side has been not being professional enough for long periods of time to keep to the goal. Yeah. Which now all that shit's on you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, do, you, do you wish you would have, obviously I know it's with Peter but do you wish you would have jumped into this from the start obviously sports psychologist do you, do you, do you think it would be mandatory yeah. like as a box look have someone there no, another good question mate if, it's an old saying I, I wish if I had Peter buddy 15 years ago I'd be, I, I would have had all the millions of pounds in the bank and not been taken off me mm-hmm. you know but it's all what ifs and what ifs and what ifs. Because, and the truth is, and this is thanks to Peter as well. I've had to look at myself and say, do you know what, George? It's no one else's fault. It ain't. I've lost this and they're taking it off of me, but it's my own fault. No one put a gun to my head and said, sign this and sign that. I signed it. So whose fault is it? It's mine. And sometimes you have to look in the mirror and say, do you know what, George? Shut up talking shit. All right? Get on with it properly now. I mean, and don't worry about what everyone else is saying. You know what I mean? Because if I was in a room with 100 people and 99 go, do you know what, George, you're the bollocks, but one person went, I think you're a prick, I'll forget the 99 and concentrate on the one and try and make him like me. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? But now, but now I'm not, well, if you don't like me, don't, you don't like me. That's, that's my mentality now. I can't please everyone, and you can't. You just have to benefit what's going to work for you and your family. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's, that's what I do now. Thanks to Pete as well. Amazing. Mate, and it's an amazing journey, isn't it? I, I love I love it. And like you're saying, it's it's my, my favourite song in the world is I wish that I knew what I know now when I was younger. But yeah. you don't. But that, that's, yeah. and that's the end of it. I always went, you don't. Yeah. So like, yeah. you did sort of your yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So it's, yeah. what I'm saying is that I, I, me personally, I'm, I'm sure obviously your journey's going to go great. I I'm, I'm so can't wait to see it because the way you're speaking now, obviously I didn't know you before tonight, George, but you seem like you're in a great place mentally and I know, yeah. it's, I know obviously, but a lot of it, a lot of it stands with you, but a lot of it stands yourself, so I'm so excited to see the next step. Yeah. Well. No, but that, once again, that's, that's thanks to, to Pete, like Pete on the eyes, it's, it's mad, I met him through Paul, um, Paul uh, O'Sullivan, and it was like, some, it's sometimes, you know that saying, it's, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm-hmm. Like me knowing Paul's introduced me to, to Pete. And like at the time it was just like, Pete was like, don't worry about nothing. I'm gonna sort, I'm gonna help you out. I mean, and you know when someone puts their, their, their time and effort into you, 
you don't want to let that person down. Do you know what I mean? It's like you you you, know, you become close with that person. Like, I know his son's on here right now, but he become he comes like a father figure, and you're like, I don't want to let this man down because he's taking his time out for me, and that's what geez, it gives me that that little um, that gives me that little spark to keep. You know, if I don't want to go for a run tonight, but I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to let Peter down. So I go for that run. You know what I mean? It's it's the benefits of it. You know, it's, 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 yeah, it's, um, yeah. yeah. Oh, good question, powerful, man. powerful stuff. Powerful yeah. stuff. Absolutely, mate. It's unbelievable. Jules, as, as the, um, I've listened to it a few times, your mentality podcast. Tell us a bit about that. I, I've not really spoke to you about it that much, but I've listened to a few episodes. Uh, the the men mentality podcast, how that come around was um, Lee Fuller and Terry Dunnage. Yeah. That, um, like, they, I've been speaking to them for, God, God knows how long. We'd, all, we've been chatting about things and um, even talked to me about boxing. We just, and obviously they all knew what I was going through. Like, everyone, like, my, my story's all over fucking social media. But no one's ever actually asked me, are you all right, George? Do you know what I mean? It's, um, mm. And it, they asked me how I was all right, and I just started crying. But I might even start crying now, but I did. I just, um, yeah, I started, um, yeah, just, I started wearing up, and they was like, do you know what? We need to do a podcast here. Do you know what I mean? Because the thing is, if my missus is pissed off, what does she do? She goes and talks to her mates. Women talk about their issues. Mm. Us men don't. We bottle it up, or oh, we can't talk about it, or it might, might make me, I won't be mad enough. What are the bollocks? What are the shit? I mean, the more us men can talk about something, right, that makes you more of a man than anything. You know what I mean? So we set up this podcast, and we had we had rugby players um, right, from Saracens that one man broke his back, and oh. I just like. And they went, you're never going to walk again. But he's now walking. He's now training people. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that, just speaking to him, like, I speak to him once a week. And I'm not even joking. Like, we, we talk just to see how we, how, how his day's been. And you just hear how, it, how he's come back from his bit. You're like, mate, you are, like, he's a hero, isn't he? Like, to do what you're doing, mate, when people said, you're never going to do this again. And like, yeah. now, I'm now counting him as a mate. He's calling up and... Yeah, it's just we set up this we set up this this mentality, mate, and it's it's just hit off. But like more more and more men are coming onto it onto it now, and wanting to talk about things. But where we have to where we have to be careful is we have to say to them, All right, you can be counted as a doctor, but I'm not. I'm just talking about my feelings and how I went through my how I, how I suffered from. My nan and granddad both having a heart attack on the same night. My mum having cancer. My granddad dying, and then my son being born blind. And then my manager and my my ex missus spitting my ex missus. My manager taking all my money. It, you know, it's it's the end of the stuff. But I can sit there and I can talk on that. But I'm not a doctor, so I can't tell you to go and do. So you have to. There's a borderline that you have to watch what you say because some people do. Do think oh, like I would hate to like it never happens, but I've given someone advice and they've gone and killed themselves over it. Do you know what I mean? That's where we have to be close to being telling them that if you wanna, if you want, if you need help, go to please, please go to the doctor. Do you know what I mean? Just not do what. But the more, I'm of, you to the more of that out there, and the more people like you speaking out, and you know, and, and someone who's done what you've done in boxing, I, I think the, the better it is. You know, the more the message gets out. You, you started off saying men don't speak about, you know, their mental health and stuff going on. The more you speak, and I, I know from my experience, from my role and what I do, and, and just generally in life, it's important. It, it, it's um, something that men are kind of subconsciously told not to do throughout their life. But it's important. Yeah. That you Pete, my dad, my dad to this day, when my nan and granddad both had a heart attack on the same night together. Oh, yeah. Had heart attack. My granddad died. Then my nan was in a coma and we couldn't bury my granddad. So we didn't have to have to bury my nan with my granddad. So my granddad, my nan was in a coma, my granddad was in a, but like, he was in the morgue still for three months. Like, we didn't know what was, 
and it was, <coughs> but my dad, my dad was, and my dad's still struggling now, but my dad has got that old mentality that, no, I'll deal with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, dad, sure. it's okay to talk about it. It's okay to talk about it. No, I'll deal with it in my, I'll deal with it, I'll deal with it. And you're like, I'm try, trying to sit there and say, dad, look, let's just go and talk, let's, me and you just go for a walk and talk about it. Mm. Like, if that's going to help. But no, 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 he just doesn't want to, no, no, just go and get help, dad. Just go and, go and talk to someone. I want to, I deal with it, I deal with it. No, shut up. <laughs> With, that's, with what you're, that's, that's it. with what you're saying, what you know, not not just boxing, but boxing and also any sport. What advice would you give to young people going into a sport that that's got that, let's say, that pressure and 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 that can affect them not only their performances but to affect them mentally? What advice would you give from what you've done? So, I with me, I I bottled it up and lied to people about it. So, and the truth is people can see through you. They know you're lying, but they're like, oh, don't worry, he's just, a lie. He's just lying, he's lying. But no one wanted to ask you how, how, you, was, how you felt. Yeah. So the advice I give to people, just please, please, if you can find someone you can talk to and you can trust to talk to, but uh, the person I trust and talk to is yourself. Uh, and that's, I don't mean that in disrespect to my wife or my parents or my family members, but you are the, the person I, I talk to now, no one else. But that's I, I can come in people that, like, it's not even even athletes, it's just kids coming up or yeah. you know, talk to someone that you can, that you, you feel comfortable talking to. I mean, and, and just getting it off of your chest. Because believe in it, you know that it's an old saying, sharing is caring. Yeah, it, it it's very very true. When you you can get it off your chest and talk about it, believe me, you don't realise how, how much it helps. Yeah, it, it, and it does. So just talk about it. Don't bottle it up. Did you did you did you do you, would you find it like you're saying, where Peter was an outside source to you? Would would it be impossible for you to you know to have say these feelings to you know a family member, your wife, your kids? So would you advise someone, it's different for everyone, of course, but from your point of view, is, is it much easier to talk to who was a stranger at first and then grow a relationship with them? It is now, mate, yeah. When before, the thing is, everyone knew I was lying about things, but no one wanted to pull me to the side. They knew I was lying. Like, I was meant to be training with Tony Sims at the uh, at Matchroom's headquarters. thing. I was meant to be training with Tony at his gym in Anal, and I'd be like, oh, oh, Tony, I can't come in today, mate. I've got a wisdom tooth. I've got to have a wisdom tooth out. I'm the only fellow that's had about 45 wisdom teeth. Because I phoned up everything, lying. But in the end, instead of him, he just went, yeah, right, George, whatever. Yeah, no problems, mate. Yeah, wisdom tooth again. Yeah, right. He come that. You know what I mean? He, he got pissed off at me. Because I was. he knew I was lying to him. But, and all I wanted him to say to me at the time was, are you Okay. But he never, he just, because I think it's, it's that mentality, you know what I mean? Of course. That, was, was, yeah. you, was, you, was you, looking back at it now, was you kind of asking for help without oh, even yeah, asking? Yeah, asking. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the thing is, I never knew, I never knew how, how to ask for help back then, because I I said this, in another, when I was in, was in um, South of France training, and, um, I knew I didn't feel right, yeah, and I ain't ashamed to admit it now. But I just knew I, I like, like I, I just didn't feel, just didn't feel. But I've got all this opportunity. Everything's going really good for me, but I felt like shit. Yeah, I was always getting judged by everyone. But since social media come out, it, it's, it's ruined things for people. As much as it's great, it's a horrible yeah. thing. Do you know what I mean? And I just sit there and I said, I went, I don't feel right. I mean, I just, you know what I mean, he went, ah, listen, George, you mean, there's nothing wrong with you. Don't worry about it. I mean, look, I mean, one thing about you, I mean, you can look after yourself. And I was like, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah. But I smiled about him. And I just stood away, walked into my room and fucking cried my eyes out. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And I'm trying to cry so no one can hear me crying. It was just, it, it, right, 
I look back now and just sit there and I think, fuck. I mean, the first time I started, it was I sat on the bottom of the stairs and Dave Stewart walked up to me and went, are you all right? I just started crying. I, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, trying to build my, walked upstairs, got in my room, just bowled it. And then, and then this is as weird as it, I didn't even know what I was crying for. Oh. I was away from the missus, I was away from the kids, but I didn't know what I was crying for. Yeah, you know it's I mean? crazy. Yeah, it's, yeah, it, it's, you know what I mean? But I knew something, it was generating from, you know what I mean? And it was, when, um, when, you, yeah, when you say that, I know, like, this, it's become bigger and bigger with a lot more people. Someone originally, Clark Carlisle, I don't know if you've heard of him, and then people like Aaron Lennon, and, and, and gradually people talking about mental health in football. But I don't hear it in boxing. I, I don't well, hear do you know that being... Because it's, it's, no. in terms of... It's a, it's a macho sport, if you like, isn't it? It's two, two Yeah, but you, you look what's happened really over the last few summer. years. Yes. Exactly. But you look what's happened over the last few years. Yes. Darren Sutherland just signed the multi-million pound contract with Frank Maloney, committed suicide, right. yeah? Then, um, I can't remember his name now, so, uh, rude of me, but uh, another uh, another boxer committed suicide. Then Ernie Smith and Billy Smith, both of them, the, the brothers are, are boxed. Both of them committed suicide. Sure. I mean, both boxers. And then, and then you got, all this is happening in this sport of real men, you know, macho men, but nothing was getting done about it until Tyson Fury come out and went, do you know what? I'm suffering. I need help. Mm. I mean, and everyone's looked at Tyson Fury and gone, well, the heavyweight champion of the world's come out and said he's got problems. That means we all can. Yeah. So it's like now it's opened the floodgate and don't get wrong, some people using it now, like, like, they're just using it as an excuse. I mean, but it's opened up the doors now to people to go, do you know what? I need a bit of help. And it's it's okay to ask for help. Forget that it's a man or a woman, don't matter what what uh, man or woman, black, white, pink, yellow or blue, don't matter, nothing. If you need help, ask for it. I mean, and um, there's nothing in in shamefully about asking for help. I mean, we all need it sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah, that's brilliant. brilliant. George, I know look, we've, we've taken up an hour of your time. I don't want to take that too much of your, your time. But oh, mate, I think no, I could, I'm I could talk, to you, talk to you forever. Um, oh, yeah. I, I, again, I just want to ask you boxing, boxing questions. So my era growing up, and I don't know if Adam or probably Sonny may not, was like Nigel, but like term, British boxers was like Nigel Benn, Chris Eubank, Steve Collins, and then then yeah. obviously you had Agler and Pacquiao and pe people and the Man Earns. How good are they compared to today? What 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 would you how would you compare them? Um they look, listen, they're they're as good the boxer dogs today are just as good as them, yeah, if not better. Yeah, right. The difference about them to now is bad rivalries yeah. back then. Today right. there ain't so much rivals. No. Like it's just one man one man and in that in the in, in the heavyweight, Anthony Joshua. But now yeah. suddenly there's come a rival, Tyson Fury. You know, it, it yeah. made it it's made that it made boxing a bit more exciting. Where when you had the Marvin Hagler and all that, there was four of them. There's all yeah. bad that it made it interesting because there was four of them. It weren't just one man bashing up hundred men. You know, it yeah. was there was all rivalries between four of them. And obviously the Ricky Atten, Pac-Man, Floyd Mayweather, there was all that rivalry. Yeah. That's why, you know, they brought all that money into the, the lower divisions and not just the heavyweight division. So you need to have that rivalry with you. You need to have a, as they say, a dancing partner. You know, yeah. if you're dancing on your own, no one's gonna come and watch you. But if you're dancing with someone, people wanna watch you. Uh, what's, what's, what's your opinion on um, YouTube boxing then? Because that's obviously, it's trendy, right. the kids love it, don't yeah. they? I'm sure your yeah. kids know about right. it. So, yeah, so obviously I was, I was training with the Mayweathers when they come out and trained with us. Okay. And um, listen, it's the only damn, like I've been boxing nearly 25 years. Two men, two boys have come along 
and earned 500 million, right? Something I'm never ever going to see in my lifetime, right? 500 million in one fight, right? All because of and this is the new this is the new world now, social media. I mean, and um, but I'll, I'll probably be jumping on your back later, mate, and asking for a bit of help on the social media side because I haven't got a clue of it. But it's it's the I'm, and I'm not going to knock it because it's bringing a new a new platform for boxing to showcase itself. But I don't want it to get too gimmicky if, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I want it to make. I want I want people to still know that boxing still will. You still get bloody hurt in it, and um, that yeah, and it's still real. Right, it's 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 a dangerous sport. Not all this gimmicky. Uh, yeah, these, the YouTubers have got to know that boxing is an art, isn't it? It's not just yeah, just yeah, definitely going into. But, the, it's all about respect. Like I said, it's an art yeah, as well. Yeah, well said, mate. Well said. But that's the thing. And once again, I'm not knocking them. Right, they've done because, and it ain't it ain't their fault. It's it's people that are, that are buying the. It's all the trends, kids that are buying the, the trends and yeah, that, isn't it? the trend. Yeah, so um, yeah, you can't knock them for it. It's just um, they give boxing another platform to showcase itself. So um, if, listen, the, I've got four years left. If that, if I can showcase my time on that as well, I'm going to jump on it and and uh, if I can set my kids up for for life, then that's what I'm going to do. Um, that's my plan. So um, yeah, anything that makes boxing and um, showcases box, boxing in the correct manner, I'm I'm up for it. It's do you, do you, do you, I think like that's it. I thought it was a great question, Sonny, because. Obviously, where it's coming in now is, will you do you think these will be remembered in twenty years as the first to ever do it? Kind of step out of put a social media world into, like we're saying, the man's world, the real world. Yeah. The box. But will these be remembered for the for the ones who've done it, or will this be quickly forgotten? Do you think? And it'll be a phase. Uh, um, I think it's going to last. Boxing, rugby, football, yeah. cricket. 15 minutes after Sky Sports app is on. Yeah, it's, 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 all, it's all going that way now. So it's just learning to jump on that platform at the right time to um, escalate yourself. Because you don't want to be look like you're you're jumping on someone else's bandwagon. And because a lot of people do it, but they don't earn no money out of it. It looks like they are, but they're not. Mm. And so it's about jumping at the right time and earning, earning uh, all I'm being, mate. I'm not here to hurt anyone. I just want to um, set my kids up for life. Because life it's is... clearly done. perks of it, isn't there? Doing this YouTube box. Like I said, setting your kids up for life with it. Yeah, totally, mate. Totally. Totally. But I'm not even joking. I've, like, I've been getting loads of stick lately over, over things. But just over silly things, like, oh, you're trying to copy this person, you're trying to copy that. I'm like, I'm not trying to copy no one. I'm just doing my own thing. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah, but someone else is doing this. So, yeah. There's, there's thousands of people doing it. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm just, I'm all I'm trying to do is better myself. I'm not here to be, I mean, the worst one was when I boxed on HBO and um, I come out to Alicia, all right, I come out to Alicia Keys song, right? Okay. You know, New, New York, New York, uh, New York song. What's it going like, George? Give us a bit, give us a bit. What's it going like? the big sin. Big, like, big, big. Yeah, my voice is gone, mate. I can't really. Um... <laughs> One of them wisdom teeth again, is it? Wisdom teeth. <laughs> 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 <It's good. laughs> George, I'm having that as a good walkout song. That often yeah. that's a great walkout. I love that. Yeah. Look, at, look at the younger no, generation we're on that. Yeah but, yeah, but I come out to it boxing in London. Oh, shit. Right? <laughs> Coming out to a song, New York, New York, yeah. in London. Yeah. And I, my true <laughs> can. I had to deactivate it. De I, I had to get rid of it because I I had like over twenty thousand followers on it, and they were just I got crucified by Americans. You English bum coming out to an American song while you're in London. Uh, oh, who's your yeah. P Who's your PI? You, uh, you should sack them. It was just yeah, just like is a and everything was. I just got absolutely abused, and, and I was like, do you know what? Because my phone was constantly going ping, 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 ping. I was like. I'm deleting it <laughs> uh, just for my for my own self. I've only just started it back up. Well, I haven't done another one back up, but I don't use it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Just because I don't want to start that. Not yeah. that I'm scared, but I just it's like 
Uh, it is though, isn't it? Like it's like anything is. No matter what, I know you, you we like you can get to a stage where it's look, you do your own thing and you don't care what people think. But like you're saying, you could knock someone out in five seconds. Twenty thousand people are saying to you, mate, you don't believe, but you don't believe. But three people could say, mate, you had the ball in your nose there and your punch went quick enough. You focus on them three. Yeah, yeah, you know, no, to totally. Exactly. So that's the power of social media. But yeah, yeah. But you've, got to, you've got to learn to just, who cares what any these those three people think? It's just people just saying something. Like. Well said, mate. But I, I have a man now called King Boris that's helping me um, helping me with my social media. Because yeah, as good. I said, I'm not... Yeah, he's fantastic. But I'm not... I'm not clued up on social media, if I'm totally honest with you. Like, hmm. when people start slagging me off on it, and he's like, George, don't they get here? Why didn't why why reply? Yeah. Why reply to them? As soon as you reply to them, you they've got your attention, it's game over. Mm, yeah. I mean, and who does it make look bad? It makes me look bad. Because yeah. I'm meant to be in the public eye, I'm meant to be this, you know, meant to be this nice, but every now and then you want to say to someone, just leave me alone and fuck off. Yeah. But yeah. you can't, you can't. They're just looking for a reaction most of the time. That's what it, it is. It is, mate. Yeah, just that. It is that, mate. Yeah. People don't even look. People don't even actually mean what they're saying. They actually just want you to respond to them. Yeah. Yeah. So you might say, George, or whatever. You say, Adam, you are the yeah. shittest boxer in the whole world. You don't. They actually are funny, but they just want you to write back. Yeah. And so they they've said, George yeah. is lied to me. That's yeah. Yeah. And that that is the truth. That is the truth. I mean, it's just like, mate, cowardly. I, like, I, like, I think it is keyboard warriors, mate. That's what they're called. I mean, yeah, keep those. Um... I've told you, George. Whenever next one we're ready, mate. The ready, mate. I'm telling you, you bring side ones as well. You know, <laughs> cost me what about a one of these? I was few. <laughs> we have to do it over Zoom, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, have, have, that'd be no. That's like it. That's better than the YouTube. Just so you can do the most jumps in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. In American style, he knows. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to uh, coming to watch. Hopefully, when this is all over. Yeah, no stress, mate. We can help you with that. No, George, before you go, I've got, got to ask you. Yes, uh, mate. Joshua or Tyson? If it goes ahead in the summer. Oh, Tyson, three. Tyson. Yeah. yeah oh, I'm just... going Joshua. I'm having Joshua. No but, way. Uh, jo Joshua, if 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 he if he lands, then yeah. But I can't see him. He's Tyson, I forget that I've boxed on the same show as him and I've been that in Vegas with him. Tyson, his boxing ability is second to none. Like, and the way he moves for someone that's six foot seven, or sorry, six foot nine, isn't he? For someone that yeah. moves, like, he moves like I move. And he shouldn't be able to do that. Do you know what I mean? It's, and it's, it's um, yeah, it's going to be, um, well, it's a, do you know what? It'd be a crime if that happens. And there's not allowed a, a crowd to be there. I don't yeah, think they'd yeah. do that. Do you think they'd do that? No. I don't think they'd do that. No, they'll oh, weigh no. it out, won't they? Yeah, but you, if you weigh it out, if you wait it out, sorry, weigh it out. If you wait, wait too long, the boat's shipped. The boat's the gone. Height, if that makes the sense. The yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So it's got to be soon. I don't think. I don't think it will die on that fight. I can't because everyone's waiting for it to happen. So I can't true, see it dying. True, true. Oh, that would be, um, I, I swear, that, oh, that would be unbelievable, you know, that, that would bring back the British, like... Well, look at, look at that side, we're getting talking about it just now. No, no, that's, like a world, that's, like a world, like, that's like a World yeah. Cup when everyone's throwing drinks. That's yeah, exactly, everyone, yeah. Even men, children, women, everyone would make, it'd be an event, wouldn't it, for everyone? Yeah. We're getting Doing down the culture, yeah. getting there, we're getting yeah. in there. Oh, no, that's what like, like that, that, I think, yeah. No, the, apparently, bunk, bunk, apparently, it's meant to be at Tottenham Hotspur's new stadium. Oh, right. Uh, so, that is big, to be fair. That's great, George. Thanks for again. Thanks for coming on, mate. Honestly, nah, mate, I've mate, loved please. it. I've absolutely loved it. Thanks so yeah, much. It's yeah. been fascinating thanks, listening. Thanks for yeah. having me, George. Take care, mate. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank 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 th